Hello friends, this video on chemical kinetics part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's talk about the unit of the rate of reaction. See, rate of reaction is what? Is either minus of change of concentration of product by time or change of concentration of reactant by time. If you talk about the unit now, unit of rate of reaction, let's put the unit of product. So what is the unit of concentration of product? See concentration is always in moles per liter, similarity, correct? And delta T is at time, time can be in second, minutes per hour generally we use seconds it can be minutes also it can be hours also and this is for the gaseous state sorry liquid state liquid state we have moles per liter so for the unit of reaction for the liquid state will be moles per liter per second right this will be moles per liter per second that will be the unit of reaction for the liquid state if you talk about the gaseous state in gaseous state, let me talk about the gaseous state. In gaseous state, what happens is the concentration is in the, let me draw a line here, is in the atmospheric pressure, ATM, and time will be in second. So this will be the unit of the rate of reaction in gaseous state. Is this clear? So we have two different type of uh, rates, instantaneous rate, average rate, in both the case, the unit is same. It is, if it is a liquid uh, solution, we'll talk about moles per liter per second, that will be the unit of rate of reaction. If it is in gaseous state, for example, H2 plus O2. So in that case, we'll talk about atom per second. ATM is nothing but atmospheric. Let's take this example. We have to find the average rate of reaction during the time interval. This is my butyl chloride reacts with water to give butyl alcohol and HCl. Concentration of butyl chloride is given for given time interval. Right? So you plot the graph also. What you get at 0, the concentration was 1. At 50, it is 0 0.095. Somewhere at leave 50, we have 200. It is 0 0.067. Somewhere here. At 300, it is 0 0.05. Unit is 0 0.05 somewhere here. 400 is 0 0.04 somewhere here. 700 is 0 0.02 somewhere here. And then 800 is 0 0.017 somewhere here. Yeah. So we see this is the kind of graph you get. But the question is, they don't want us to draw the graph. They ask, asking for the average rate of reaction during the time interval, all this interval, this is one interval. So other interval is this, like that. So let's find the first time interval uh, reaction rate, right? ABG rate is nothing but, if you see minus of change of concentration of product, that is, this is the final concentration. 0 0.0905 minus initial concentration 0 0.1 by change in time is 50. You solve this, you get 1.90. Correct. Let's do it for the next time interval. This is the interval, next time interval. So here again, my rate is nothing but minus of Final concentration there is this 0 0.0820 minus initial concentration will be this one 0 0.0905 divided by time will be 100 minus 50 that is 50. You solve this you get something as 1.7. Correct. Let's talk about the third uh, window. Here we will talk about the rate once again. 
minus of final concentration is nothing but 0 0.0741 initial is 0 0.0820 by time is 150 minus 100 it is 50 you solve this you get 1.58 you keep solving it you see that the rate is decreasing it's 1.9 1.7 1.58 the next will come out to be 1.4 then it will be 1.22 you can solve it then it will be 1.1 1.04 and the last will be point what do you see the rate of reaction is decreasing so the main point why we took this numerical was to show you that for a given reaction the rate of the reaction decreases it slows down and then it reaches equilibrium that's what happens initial the rate of the reaction is more then the concent uh, concentration of the reactant goes down because it is being consumed and now it is in the product form the rate of the reaction is decreased to design the expression of the rate of reaction let's take this reaction i have my hg plus cl2 gives hgcl2 this is the liquid chlorine gas hgcl2 in solid so you see the rate of reaction here it will be what minus of change of concentration of Hg with respect to time or minus of change of chlorine concentration of chlorine with respect to time or plus of change of concentration of HgCl2 with respect to time correct this is in the product side so plus these two are in reactant side so negative fair enough now let's consider another reaction we have let's suppose nitrogen that reacts with three moles of hydrogen to give two moles of NH3, all in gas form. Now, if you see this stoichiometry coefficients of the reactant and products are not equal to one, they are not the same. So, in this case, the rate of disappearance of any reactant or the rate of appearance of product has to be divided by their stoichiometry coefficient. So, in this case, if I want to write the rate of reaction, nothing but minus of change in concentration of N2 with respect to time minus of change of concentration of H2 with respect to time here there is 3 so I will divide it by 3 Min or plus of change of concentration of NH3 with respect to time here you have 2 so I will divide it by 2 here was 1 so 1 divide multiply doesn't make any difference so nothing is there now you must be wondering why there is 1 by 3 here, 1 by 2 here. There has to be reason, right? There has to be reason why we have uh, divided with this stoichiometric coefficient. So let's see, let's assume at t is equal to 0, this was x, this was y and this was z moles. At t is equal to t, this becomes x minus 1, let's suppose. So this becomes what? y minus 3, correct? Because since it is 1, this is 3, if 1 moles of nitrogen is getting consumed, 3 moles of hydrogen has to get consumed and this becomes Z plus 2 because if 1 mole of nitrogen is getting consumed, 2 moles of ammonia will be produced. Correct? So let's find the value of first delta N2 by delta T here, minus of this. This becomes minus of delta N2 is what? Final concentration, initial concentration. Final concentration is X minus 1 minus initial concentration is x divided by change in time is t and this becomes if you see 1 by correct it's fine for this minus of change in concentration of hydrogen final concentration is y minus 3 initial concentration is y by t and that is nothing but 3 by d it's fine for these values Change in concentration of NS3, ammonia final concentration is Z plus 2, initial is Z, final minus initial by T, cancel, that is 2 by T. So if you see this is 1 by T, this is 3 by T, this is 2 by T. They are not same. They can be made same if you multiply this by 1 by 3 and 2 by T with 1 by 2. So in this case, if you see, all becomes 1 by T. Correct, and that is the reason why we divide all these values by their stoichiometric coefficient. See, for gaseous reaction, 
it need not be moles per liter we can uh, find the we can denote the concentration using pressure the partial pressure like the partial pressure of the reactant and product okay so let's see this reactions i have 2hi and it gives hydrogen and iod all gas for this i want to write the rate of reaction just practice minus of since it's the reactant change in concentration of hi by delta t and since there is a 2 here i'll multiply one by 2 or this is nothing but this is a product now change in concentration of h2 no negative sign because it's a product it's one here so i can just see by t or change in product concentration of iodine by delta t correct let's take another example just for practice let's suppose i have five yaar kya ho raha hai yaar patta nahi jaldi jaldi kyun hang ho raha hai sab thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again